Hey guys, welcome to game two between Arthur and Rancor. Rancor is going to be starting the upper right hand corner as the blue Zerg bottom left hand corner. We have Arthur starting as the red Protoss. This is going to be on Eclipse, which despite me coming off vacation brain and wanting to say, hey, maybe it's a Zerg favorite or a, or a Protoss favored map. No, I feel like this is, I really feel like the meta really is in Zerg favor right now, particularly because of the potential of the 973 and Protoss just feeling a little bit off kilter and unbalanced knowing how to respond to that. And I feel like they're still trying to feel that out, find their Bisu build, find... And I feel like, especially at this, perhaps it's maybe a Chobo Hasu League level thing, I feel like a lot of the counter builds that I've seen that have been successful, as far as a lot of the Zealot timings, a lot of the breakout techs, uh, things along those lines, have just, um, I don't know, either haven't been executed, haven't been felt very well. I feel like Protoss players are still finding themselves in the current meta, I guess, where I feel like Zerg have a lot of tools to work with. They've got, in particular, that early game where you can just slam that front door with Hydralisks if you want to, or you can kind of do that four hatch pullback thing into Mutalisk, or you can just do a Mutalisk switch or just do three hatch Muta straight up. Anyway, I feel like there's options. We are seeing a nine pool, which I think is a intelligent build to pull off on a two player map to get those Zerglings out a little bit earlier and apply that pressure. Force that forge down. Looks like we are seeing a forge built right off the bat, Arthur. I'm going to go ahead and sneak up. I think we saw that drone extractor trick, so that, which is why we're seeing negative supply overall, or supply in the red. I don't want to call it negative supply, because it's like negative. Technically, you, you have, you're have over the cap, so it would be positive supply. But I'll just say it in the red. We are going to see a forge. Here's the other thing, is even with this nine pool opening, you don't necessarily, although it does make sense to you, you don't necessarily have to produce the Zerglings. You can just be like, oh, I'm producing Zerglings, force a couple cannons, and then just, you know, get your natural expansion things up uh, afterwards, but it just makes sense to produce the Zerglings because you want to go ahead and kill that scout, particularly on a two-player map like this, to put your opponent in the dark. Arthur does have that initial cannon down, actually opting for both cannons on the front, right off the bat, before even seeing those Zerg. And I wonder if actually a, a Zerg has done that to just, m that would be mind games, right? It's like you produce the Zerglings, that's the typical thing to do. Let's just throw that larva out and just kidding, it was drones and maybe just two Zerglings. Probe gets taken out almost immediately. And Arthur now in the dark once again. This cannon will warp in. I believe Arthur, is he going to go for a Nexus to follow this up? It looks like he's positioning to take a Nexus and is just going to allow those two cannons to do the work for themselves. Aren't seeing any follow-up Zerglings. And this should be sufficient to go ahead and pull them back. But one of these cannons might take a decent amount of damage. And it's also possible we'll see a run by across the left, because I think if you just shoot this gap, you can get Zerglings in if you come in from the right angle, and that angle was not it. So Zergling's going to go ahead and immediately back off. Upon two of their brethren being taken out. Natural expansion making its way. Rancor moving out with this drone. Is he going to go to the 12 o'clock? It looks like he's going to go for an in-base third. I think this has been kind of that natural response to those wandering zealots. It's, it's weird. It's almost like things are going full circle. We're back to 2009 again with the in-base three hatchery build because oftentimes where Zerg have opted to try to take those expansions that have gas where they've been a little bit out in space, it's been harder to defend. That's allowed Zealot attacks to be more impactful for it. So it feels like, yeah, a lot of Zerg players are now opting to go for the in-base three hatch build to follow. Hydra will stand once again for Rancor. So again, going for early Hydra pressure. And this is kind of a, I'm not sure if this is just cutting edge, if this is just a Rancor thing or if this is just cutting edge and I have not come across it yet. It's possible. The probe going to wander in. He's going to see that Hydralis done down. The interesting thing, thing with this build, with the kind of three in base, three hatch Hydralisk, without that additional base, is you know at least you're going against two bases worth of Hydralisk production rather than the three bases. Because really it's that third base and getting those few extra drones at that location that really make that 973 build so powerful. I think Arthur, we'll see if he's kind of got the experience and knack. This is where I'm not that level of Brood War player to know the exact amount of cannons you kind of want to drop to kind of cope and deal with this. Zerglings are going to be able to take that probe scout out. Going to go ahead and drop a preventative third cannon immediately and a cannon out on the front as well. This is honestly, a, also when seeing this, I wonder if it's worthwhile, and I know some Protoss players have been doing this, is just going ahead and dumping an extra forge on the back at the main and not opting to even bother with trying to get level 1 weapons out on the front door. Because oftentimes it just seems like inevitable. You go for that level 1 weapons 
and then you have Hydralisks in your face and nothing happens. This time, Rancor are going to go ahead and push to Lair. So potentially going Lurkers, it is possible he'll flip and go for a tech switch. This time, Arthur opting to get a Stargate. Kind of odd. He almost feels like a, a kind of reverse of the previous match where he's going to go ahead and go for the Stargate this time. Not going to opt for the Gateway. Wants to get an eye on what Rancor is doing. Citadel of a Dune warping in as well. Zergling and Overlord on the front just to see if any sort of attack force is making its way across. No second gas. So it looks like it is going to be more of a, at least at this stage of things, Arthur is kind of setting up for more of a zealot heavy initial game. Probe wandering up is going to see an evolution chamber and sort of a sim city at the front. We do have a drone at the 12 o'clock base setting up to take there. Somehow that probe weaves its way in, sees a lack of second gas, which is pretty big piece of information. The drone attacking the hatchery for some reason just doesn't like it. Doesn't like the place it was born. Lair is up. We are seeing a uh, hydralisk speed being upgraded and hydralisk now being produced. So I'm wondering if this is going to turn hydra contain into lurker potentially. Kind of odd to go up to lair and not immediately research lurker. Perhaps Rancor thrown up, thrown out a little bit with this build just because of the length of time that Probe Scout was alive. Corsair making its way across. Wants to go ahead and see what information it can. Turning around, going to peck away that initial overlay. Needs to keep eyes on it. Because Hydralisks are grouping up. So at least at this stage, Arthur knows, okay, I'm going up against some form of Hydralisk build. Is moving up, is seeing that lair. And I guess Rancor, he just really wanted to get Phenomenized Carapace up as rapidly as possible to deal with potential Dark Templar and just, again, go for more of a, a Hydralisk contain style build. Although he does have this 12 o'clock base up and running. Tracy's Armory, by the way. I got mine at the Armory. I wonder if... I wonder if they do sell mines at Tracy's Armory. If they just like, here, here's an explodey thing. Have fun. Corsair moving up. Second Corsair being produced. So that's going to put Rancor in the red, not in the negative. Two additional gateways plopping down. Things actually looking pretty good for Arthur here. He's got that Templar Archives up. He's got Citadel of Adun. He's moving, moving more towards the Bisu-ish build. And he's got that Dark Templar forward. Even with Phenomenized Carapace. Ooh, careful Corsairs. One Corsair down. I feel like as these Corsair wander out and just provide harassment, there's just a lot of territory to cover with three bases worth of production of Hydralisks. And again, no additional gas and no additional saturation here. It's a little bit harder to get the raw amount of Hydralisks that you want to really cover absolutely everything. Some overlords are going to pop right here. And you can see this is what this is doing is this is forcing, oh, he's attacking his own overlord. Whoops. Uh, Rancor really does not like his own units. He's punishing them for their incompetence. I believe this Spire has been scouted now from Arthur as well. So hopefully he can stick on that Corsair production. DT gonna wander up. But basically all what all this is doing is this is forcing Rancor to play more defensively, which is allowing Arthur to go ahead and sit back and do what he wants and get his own production up. Warping in a pylon here in the back of his naturals. He's gonna warp in some cannons at his main as well. He's not keeping up with Corsair production. So I'm a little bit concerned with a quick tech switch two mutalisks there is a window here from rancor he's got a lot of gas saved up doesn't have quite the minerals to do a quick lap over hydralisks now moving up to the natural expansion a high templar without size storm is there it's going to get picked off no overlord to provide some support so the dark templar could provide some additional damage right there dark templar and of course they're still hanging out the three o'clock to perhaps do some additional annoyance and damage two more gateways warping in so a lot of gateways down for arthur Bring his count. Oh, well, I'm waiting for the additional production. So, bring his count up to six. Am I missing one? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 I can count. feel like I'm a Sesame Street commentator all of a sudden. Eight. Ah, 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 ah. The count. Uh, High Templar a little bit forward. Rancor's managed to get that base up and mining. He's got that third gas up but is not yet mining gas at that location not making his way to hive either he's starting to push his way towards lurker tech but has been mostly on the defensive here in this mid game arthur starting to push out i'm wondering if he's going to go ahead and start 
if he can move a probe up here, he does have a little bit of a window here with Rancor kind of sitting back and playing defensively to go ahead and maybe move a probe up, get some cannons down, and establish his 9 o'clock base, which is a big critical swing moment for Protoss players. He's moving up there, waiting for that pylon to warp in. I assume waiting for that pylon and cannons to warp in before he plops down the Nexus. All sorts of Hydralisks and whatnot, and patrol on patrol for Rancor, he's worried about those High Templar being able to sneak through. Or sorry, Dark Templar able to sneak through. Here's the big th the big threat I feel is Rancor right now has a big bank. He can he has enough larva where he could do a spire switch. He is sitting just on four hatcheries here. He hasn't increased his hatchery count. It's also possible that he can just plop down a bunch of lurkers. It looks like he's going to just stick to Hydralisk lurker tech here in the mid game. Now grouping up with these Hydralisks in the midfield. Still no lurkers to speak of anywhere. Arthur starting to move out. Maybe wants to take a shot at this 12 o'clock base. A decent Sim City and some Sutton Colonies and other action right there. He's doing that while those cannons are warping in at the 9. A bunch of lurkers, yeah, morphing in right there. So Rancor, I trying to play a little bit more defensively, get his drone economy up, get an attack force up. But while he was camped there, while he, the one moment he didn't have those Hydralisks on patrol, Arthur just marching up, the Zealots put Wow, all the way through, right on top of those Sutton Colonies. And that entire attack force was able to get up there. High Templar on the low ground. Is he going to get those side storms off? Does get the side storms off in this game. And some nice side storms indeed. Keep in mind, he doesn't have any observers here. So those, those Zelts need to just pound down these hatcheries as quickly as possible and evacuate if they can. There's a cancellation. Does take the hatchery out. Maybe the side storms will be able to take care of the lurkers. No, just, yeah, he just needs to evacuate from here. Try to get out as many Zelts as he possibly can. Unfortunately, it looks like that ramp is blocked by those Hydralisks. So they're getting annihilated. Still, I feel like that was a decent trade. Loses his army, but a decent trade was able to take out two hatcheries for it. And critically able to establish that 9 o'clock base. And right now, Rancor just sitting at 31. Is doing the Mutalisk switch, and this is where the main is a little bit thin. There's not a lot of Corsairs up in the air, and there's not any Archons that I can see anywhere. The question is, is where do the Mutalisks go? Natural Expansion also very exposed. I feel like this is underutilized by Zerg, at least at this tier that I've seen recently, is doing kind of that tech switch all of a sudden into Mutalisk and getting aggressive with it. This is also beautiful to take care of High Templar. Arthur also, I still don't see, where's the Robo? Needs a robotic facility and get uh, and some observers. Does have dragoons, but he just doesn't have sight on these lurkers. Mulesk's now starting to position out towards that 9 o'clock base. And you can see these lurkers kind of position in such a way to cut off reinforcements for engaging there. Just a single Corsair. Single Corsair sees all those Mulesk's, but I'm, not, I'm still not seeing positioning of a cannon. And it looks like they're just going to dive into this cannon line. With the Hydralisks and the Mutalisks from down below, that is not the location I would have dedicated these Mutalisks. These Mutalisks get wiped out almost immediately. Reinforcements are coming across. That Lurker line just gets obliterated and Psystormed. And I feel Rancor just... Oof. So opted to dive and honestly lost a huge amount of resources on what I would call an ill-advised attack for sure right there. An Observer finally out for Arthur, by the way. He has managed to somehow sneak a base in the bottom right-hand corner. He's got that 12 o'clock base back up, but it is not yet mining. Rancor sitting at a measly 33 probes, sorry, drones. Range is upgrading for these Dragoons, and now Arthur is just sitting on, what is this? So 4, 8, 10. 10 gateways. Does have level 1 weapons, level 2 weapons making its way. Don't think we have the upgrade advantage. Sorry, we do have an upgrade advantage for Rancor. Rancor's done a good job staying on top of that. In these matches. I like that playstyle actually. Uh, from him. But now Arthur starting to press forward. I'm not sure. Well is he going to see this bottom right hand base. To go ahead and attack it. I think he should easily be able to wipe out that 12 o'clock once again. Despite reinforcements from Rancor. And Rancor's supply count is just measly comparatively. Good side storms from Arthur this time. Honestly he just kind of lazily. Doing the side storms on these engagements. And I don't think Rancor can even muster enough a defense force to defend his main let alone defending his exterior bases and I do believe that Arthur realizes this he's starting to push in 
Observer's leading. It looks like that Spore Colony is going to push this back. A couple High Templar getting in the way as well. Morphing into Archons on the front. Nice Sim City, though, for Mancor. Some Psystorm just absolutely decimating this Hydralisk force on the defense. A Probe attacking that Sutton Colony. The Dragoon's just going to do th some work from the background here. Able to wipe out the rest. Archon's now on the front. Let's see if again Arthur can regather this attack for us. I think he was just paying attention to some units, other locations. The drone's getting wiped out, and this was already a very low drone count. Unfortunately, what this is spiking Rancor to do is pump some drones at these additional bases, but he needs to hold his main if he's going to win this match. Trying to get another creep colony down at the natural to morph into a, a sunken colony while Arthur is being somewhat distracted. Some Zerglings flooding in. Zerglings do not do well against Archons. And this is several Archons at the natural expansion. Rancor desperately trying to hold on to this. But Calls GG right there just did not have enough resources to pull the game through. I gotta, I gotta say, kudos to Arthur. Having the Dark... And that's exactly what we want to do with that exact build. With the Bisu build, I have the High Templar out there. I have the... Or is not the High Templar. Have the Dark Templar out there. Have the Corsair really put Zerg in a defensive position and then macro up. Establish your third and then just pound away from there. Great play from Arthur. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll move on to game three between these two in a moment.